Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we became honorary Gorons. Yes, even you, Ciela, and presumably Leaf and Neri as well. Uh, they recognized our entire cause as a good thing for the Gorons and opened the way to the Goron Temple, the resting place of the next pure metal. We also befriended the chief's son who was supposed to show us the way and he vanished, but I guess he wasn't really totally all that important. This time, in we go to the dungeon. Like a complete and total lineback, I accidentally walked into the dungeon right before I started recording and I wasn't able to get all the footage of the scene that starts up when you enter it, but it's not really all that bad. All that happened was, hey Link, I think this is a dungeon. Do you think this is a dungeon? Because I think that's pretty likely. Maybe it's a dungeon, yeah. Something along those lines. Here, uh, we got blue choo-choos, which I am terrible at aiming at, and we got Beemos, oh, which I'm equally bad at aiming at. I was trying to show as a bit of a refresher because it's been a while since we've run into these. Beemos are not truly invinci- or er, not truly invincible, but they're also not truly beatable at the same time. They can be stunned for a lengthy period of time by shooting an arrow into their eye, but they will eventually regenerate. I wish we could regrow eyeballs. All the things for humans to not be able to do, regeneration, when that's a very common thing in nature. Makes you wonder if maybe there was a certain amount of points that had to be invested into the capabilities of a life form, and that was just where whoever was doing the character creation sheet that day was shirking on it. <laughs> I am thinking way too into this and comparing everything to a video game, but you don't know that it's not a video game. Maybe, maybe every time you wash your hair, the GPU of the universe hates you for it because of how many calculations have to go into the physics behind it. Either that or, okay, I'm gonna get off this topic. Uh, new enemy, Armos. Very distracted there, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I think of everything like it's video games. It's, it's a curse, I'm afraid. Armos uh, can be beaten with a bomb. There's bomb flowers for that purpose and they turn into just normal statues after the fact. Also not truly destroyed. Now, this dungeon. I appreciate those transparent doors that we have. The ones made of iron grates. Not any more resource intensive. It's a nice, easy way of making things unique, and I very much appreciate them doing it. I like it when there's unique looks to places, and that's a rarity in this game. I'm so happy that at least it's the second half that seems to have all these original art assets. I hope you were watching closely, because there was a switch down there that's now covered up by that bridge, and if you remember that that's there, we get the only one true collectible collectible, a treasure map. Buried, ooh, all right, very off to the east there. Gonna be a treasure run after this, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you know, I'll stick with the sword beams for a little bit longer. I was kind of thinking maybe not doing that. Uh, sword cannot hurt those guys. Uh, just with there being blue choo-choos and stuff like that, uh, we haven't had much opportunity. Ooh, I got both of them one shot. You come with me. The other one, stay there and rot, and have a chip off of your shoulder because I left a bomb near you. We push this down. And onto this thing that looks like a creeper face. No, we can't do that. But what we can do, actually, do I even need an Armos for this? This is pretty far out there. Nope, just a shortcut back to the entrance. That seems to be a staple, and I have to say I'm a big fan of it. Not all Zeldas do this. Wind Waker before it had um, shortcuts to later parts of the dungeons, and I very much appreciate that, because when you're a kid, you know, as an adult, I get through these pretty quickly, but as a kid, Zelda dungeons are hard. They require a lot of lateral thinking. They might have you stump there for a little while, and I found myself kind of not liking that as a kid because I would be in there for hours, I'd have a headache, I'd want to stop, but if I saved and quit, it'd respawn me back at the dungeon entrance, I'd have no idea what I was in the middle of doing and would essentially have to start the dungeon again anyway. I like dungeon shortcuts. I wish they were more common. That's one thing that this very, very much gets right. Bubbles! Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Not that I would want to drink the juices of skulls. Not that I've ever tried to know that they're bad, but in concept alone, I'm pretty opposed to the idea. Um, you know what? There was that sign at the beginning that said not to go in the quicksand. I embrace and celebrate my super drowning skills! Man, what happened to you, kid? <laughs> this Link, man, he, he, 
instantly dies to pretty much any remote tiny hazard. He gets instantly flash frozen, instantly sinks like a stone in water, sinks in quicksand in a matter of one second when quicksand is supposed to be a slow and painful death, buddy. <laughs> um, You went from being possibly the most overpowered Link to whatever you are now. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to harp on you, you have enough problems in life. You know what, actually? No, let's make him more masculine. He looks like he has a very large handlebar mustache when he stands behind this thing. Yeah, that's a good look on you. Definitely addresses all those people that wanted you to be more mature and gritty back in the day. You sure showed them. Goro Link, this way, brother. Hey, so that's where Gongorong was this whole time. No, not really. Monsters grabbed me and threw me in here. Please, brother. Please help me get out. Nope. No, you have to. You're a go on, brother. Help me get out of here, brother. Nope. Oh, I can't do this. You like green pants. I can't ignore a man with good taste. And I guess he's pretty cute too. Thank you, brother. I'm very sorry that I ran away from you earlier. Really? We're just glad you're okay. Hang on, we'll get you out. Hey, wait, behind you, Link. These brutes again! Shoot him in the eye and, oh, no, no. I don't wanna save my progress. No, I was just talking about how I don't like doing that. Now would be a good time to equip the Spirit of Power, get in some double damage so we can one-cycle him. Are you ready for the coolest thing ever? Amazing, brother! You actually defeated that monster! I caught! Thank you, brother. Now I can run freely again. You're welcome, but it seems like we've hit a dead end on our side. See these spikes? They're in our way. That will be no problem. With my assistance, I can help you remove that trap. Now let me show you how to switch between me and Goro Link. When you want to call on me, just tap my icon on the lower screen. When you want to switch to Goro Link, tap the icon. Understand how to switch to your controller? Like you bet I do! If one of us falls, so will the other. We share a health meter. Now then, leave this next part to me. Switch control from you to me. It's so rare that you get to play as other characters in Zelda titles. And he controls just as Darmani did back in Majora's Mask. As a big fan of the Goron Mask, thinking it just makes everything so much more fun, adds so much more dynamicism, if that's even a word to the gameplay, I'm a big fan of it. He does ground pound attacks, he does all sorts of stuff. There I am just bouncing on top of that boulder to break it open to get the enemy's sweet, juicy guts out of the inside. It's a fun time. We switch back control over to Link, and it's kind of a wonder that this sort of thing isn't more common. I, I can't think of too many other instances of this happening where you just straight up get to play as somebody else. And when you do, typically, you don't have that many abilities that make them unique or special. You just kind of walk around with them whenever it does happen. I step on this switch, switch back over to him, and every gap is a ramp to him. He steps on that switch, and we work together to form that chest. <laughs> Oh, it's such a cool idea. I love this stuff. I love controlling two characters and using them in conjunction. Everybody knew that we were getting bomb shoes in this dungeon. We can carry up to 10 in a bag. Follow a path that you draw on your map. You got the bomb shoe bag, Link. Ah, there you are, Ciela. I see your new powers have not replaced your old ones. Bomb shoes are bombs that run along a path you draw. <laughs> Two repeating. You can navigate a path by a bomb shoe by drawing up. Ciela, you are out of control. You have started repeating even yourself. Try one out to get the hang of it. Well, the text box didn't tell me to try it out before, so um, you're not totally repeating everything. <laughs> Switch back on over to Gongoron, and we have new enemies. These are, I am reluctant to call them, eye slugs. It's what they're called in the Prima Guide. I've had people tell me that the, um, that the eye fish is known as a massive eye in various other texts, so I'm kind of doubting that that's the case, but... You know how it is in these little tiny side games that don't get a lot of love or attention. There's not a lot of official text to talk about them. The Zelda Encyclopedia has changed that a, a fair tad. I did look through that book when doing research for this, but I didn't find everything that you guys are telling me about. I, I don't know, maybe I just, I, I know I looked through the whole book. Maybe I just missed them? I, I, I'm not a very good reader, I'll admit. I'm very slow and I tend to zone out when I read and then I don't realize that I have zoned out and 10 pages later, I think. Wait, when did I stop reading and I have to go back through pages and try to find the point where I last read something and eh, I've always had trouble with it and it's always discouraged me from reading. 
This sounds like I'm going into a sponsored spot by Audible, but I swear I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, bomb shoes are quite possibly the most helpful they have ever been. They're a lot more akin to the beetle in Skyward Sword, but they're able to pass through holes in the ground. They can pass over quicksand without sinking in them. They're fun, and they do a lot of damage on the other end, too. They're very guided attacks. Are you doing well over there, brother Link? Or brother girl Link? I found a hole I can squeeze through, brother. I will go explore and see if I can find us a way out. Uh, buddy, that's just a matte painting on the wall. Uh, don't do it. Wait, Gungaron, wait. Aw, oh, he's gone. Hope he'll be safe on his own. I guess if we keep searching, then maybe we'll even find some pure metal in here. Huh? Gongoron. More like Gongoron. Am I right? I've been waiting to say that one. This time I'm actually telling the truth about waiting to say that one. I don't know if that makes my life more or less pathetic. All oh, right, I don't have sword beams anymore. <laughs> Eat it. Hitting that does that. I'm gonna pull out my bomb shoes once again. Eh, close enough. Kerpow! And that's another much praiseable shortcut back to the dungeon entrance. We're making great time, actually. I, I didn't think that this would be this far this quickly. We're just blasting through it. I've had some of you tell me that, wow, these dungeons felt a lot longer when I was a kid, and I guess that plays into what I was saying about kind of liking the option to have dungeon shortcuts for the kiddies. <laughs> uh, get that out of the way. Get more bomb shoes. I don't know if I've mentioned it, but those bulbs are infinite respawning and tend to have just whatever resource you currently need. It's a nice hint system. Uh, when guiding a bomb shoe, tapping on the screen will move control back over to Link at the same time and- Oh no. You. You know what? Now you're gonna get it. You're gonna see the bomb coming and you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. Ha. Move this over- Wait, why is there another one? Where did that guy come from? His mom. Move it. Move control over to Link. Watch the touch screen. Hit it at the same time. And that moves the way up. I'm willing to bet that you are a hint NPC. Boing oing. Flip the two switches at the same time if you want to cross up ahead. And a bomb shoe could do all the work for you while you stand around. Hmm. I'm a fan of laziness. And it's not just because I'm lazy, it's because I got little stubs for legs. How do you expect me to get around and do things that fast? I wasn't very well equipped to be a hero, you know? I'm just some random islander kid with short, puny legs. Uh, oh! Mini Blins! Hello! I'm very glad I equipped the Spirit of Power because they go down in one hit to this. I love your 20 rupiness. Oh, hello! Uh, also another new enemy. There is the Flying Jars! I need to draw attention to something that I don't, that is criminally underrepresented of oh, 20 rupees for getting 20 rupees. I love whoever wrote the description for the flying jars on Zelda dungeon. Whoever wrote that article, I salute you. A flying jar is a magical container that tries to fly up and hurt Link whenever he comes near. If, when approaching a jar, it reveals itself to be evil porcelain, just use a shield. Evil porcelain. So good that I ignored the puzzle right there. I love that. Evil porcelain. I got so much amusement out of that when I was reading up on the enemies and seeing what they were capable of and if there were any little hidden ways to defeat them. That was probably the thing that was most amusing the night that I did that and uh, I had to share it with you because that deserves more attention. Evil porcelain. It's like a sinister toilet that eats people. <laughs> there are no treasure chests on this floor. I could believe Zelda being quirky enough to have an evil toilet. They never really expanded on the hand in the toilet before. Oh! He's just kind of appeared in a few games without much explanation. Or she, I guess. I don't judge. Hello. Oh, I thought I was stuck in the wall for a second and got scared. Multiple Armos and multiple switches. Hi. It's better to have lived for one second than to have never lived at all. Oh, here, got, jump on it. Thank you. You delivered yourself unto my bomb. I like that. Wouldn't be a Goron temple without bomb puzzles. Explosions are kind of their thing, which is odd because you think that would be the ultimate death for them. Die, evil porcelain, die. I always knew you were up to no good. That's why I've tried saving everyone I love from your dark designs because they could be sleeping next to a killer without even knowing it. 
It's my excuse. That's a shortcut back to the shortcut back to the dungeon entrance by going down the stairs, or no, up the stairs, that's where you'll end up. Uh, next, more of these brutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Oh no. Good thing you can't slap away an arrow. Down it goes. And down it goes. Good, good. These are arrows, I bet. Yep, might as well replenish, even if I didn't technically need them. We hit the switch. The problem is, it overs quickly. Uh, no, 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 no. Get away from me, get away from me. Hit you. Spin attack. Got all of them one go, that felt good. 2,000 rupees again, 2007, a uh, pretty good year. It's when I started trying in school for the first time ever. I don't know if that's sad, 2013, uh, kind of struggle to remember a lot of things that happened. <laughs> okay, no. this is not meant to divert into a t discussion of which years were the best, which years were the worst. Go, go, go. Got through that, pretty good. Boing oing, when it seems you cannot pass, look across the quicksand for answers. Get more bomb chews, I'm gonna be so happy when we uh, can't have, when we can have more than 10 bomb chews. Oops, didn't mean to spoil it for you. <laughs> Give me those ice slugs. And next, this part's a little bit lengthy. I want to beat every one of these enemies. Maybe I could use the arrows to get some of them actually. Yeah, that'll be fine. They have eyes on them. That's the way that they were meant to die. It was their fate from the second they were born into this world. Now, um, since we're gonna be here for a little bit, I wanna talk about kind of more of a miscellaneous topic. Something that I've wanted to discuss for a little while, but I wanted to wait for the right point in the story to do it. The Phantom Hourglass manga. I don't really talk about manga all that much because I'll admit that I'm not much of a reader, as I've alluded to before. But I have to say, I've read through the manga for Phantom Hourglass and I find it very enjoyable. I recommend it wholeheartedly to anybody who likes Phantom Hourglass, even just a little, or if you just like Zelda. It's short, only one volume. You can get through it in one evening. I know because I did and I'm a slow reader and if I can get through it in an evening, you definitely can. It's, I'd recommend it for people that have finished Phantom Hourglass. I will warn you that after the ghost ship, it gets into endgame spoilers very quickly, so be warned if I'm describing it and it sounds like a nice read for you. The reason that I recommend it, and also I recommend playing it aside from spoilers, is that it feels like a second romp through, kind of a new game plus, because it expands on multiple characters more than they were in the actual game, has a more fleshed out story, and it's just in general a really entertaining read. Lineback, oh man, Lineback. He has such a cool backstory that is not touched on in-game at all. He has more plot relevance, and he has even more jokes than he does in the actual game. He's such a good character. And not only that, but Jolene even. She gets more of a backstory, you find out more about her, and it even kind of plays into my Gerudo theory a little bit because she looks more like a Gerudo in the manga and is outright stated to be just a pirate and not a girl playing pretend dressing up like a pirate. I liked it a lot. I thought it was an even better story than this, but it was enjoyable because I had the context of this because it skips over quite a few lesser plot points. It's just very good, and I have to recommend it very, very much. Like I said, haven't read a lot of Zelda manga. In fact, this is my first, but I can tell you it made me a fan, and I'd love to see what it did with some of the greater Zelda titles out there. Boing oing, these pillars hide no secret path, so waste not a single bomb, just use the stair. That would have been good to know before. <laughs> they put that there to troll us completionist type, so it wasn't at the beginning of the hall and it was at the end of it. Bomb shoes! I wonder what we're gonna be doing. Step into the blue light to return to the temple's entrance. Attention, Kmart shopper. Time for the boss! Danganronpa, Armored Lizard! Look 
at that massive beast link! It's way over there on the other side of the sand pit! How about... My brother! Let us bring down that monster together, Goro Link! I can help you trip it up from over here! Then, you attack from over there! We have a two-person boss fight! This is exactly how I wanted this dungeon to end from the moment I saw that mechanic! Downright cool! I didn't even see what he said there, but it's okay! We direct a bomb shoe right into his big chubby gullet! Get the Gongoron out of the way! The Gongoron. The Brock would like to battle. And that's hit number one. You hit it on the side. Uh, oh! You are under attack, Garo Link. Why did he use the Ciela sound effect? I heard the hey there when he gave that text box. Maybe it was originally meant to be Ciela in the Japanese version. They localized it as Gongron talking. When you're controlling Gongron, you must watch out for yourself too. Switch control right away when I yelp for help. Give me that. Oh, he hello. You're just making yourself vulnerable for me right away. I appreciate you. Efficient boss, you know the order of things. Hit him with all your might. Control switches automatically over to Link to make this process quick. No, nope, I don't want to do that. I want to lead it into the mouth because I don't think it can travel through the plate armor. Get out of the way. Pow! Such a cool looking boss. It's not quite as cool as the massive eye, but oh, uh, it's 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 a pretty cool boss design. Oh, oh no, no, no. This Goron also, um, he's got to be the weakest Goron ever because he gets hurt by crush damage. Of course he sinks like a stone in the quicksand. I would have expected that. But he also gets hurt from the fire. What kind of Goron seriously gets hurt from the fire? Is the time hit you? I suppose his choice to wear pants was uh, not a very smart one before going into a dungeon filled with fire. That's what I'm going with. There it is. Great boss fights. Great, great boss fights. So creative. They've been great every dungeon so far. You defeated the monster, Goro Link. The pure metal is in there. I will run ahead to get it. I can't speak enough praise of these boss fights. They're amazing. Such good ideas. So creative. So clever. And they've been like that the entire way. They find new ways to keep surprising me. Speaking of which... You might be an evil monster bent on killing me, but I can respect one who eats so much candy he has a blue tongue. Gross! Oh boy, uh, throw a bomb! No! This is barely too slow switching over to it. Link, I can believe being weak to the fire. Get out of the way! Oh, look at that. Dropping regular old bombs. Oh, nope. Quite yet. Let him breathe fire. Let him need to bring in. Let him bring in air to feed the flames. I understand basic chemistry! And it helps me in the real world. Something that I never thought I would say when I was in high school because when you're a kid, you're pretentious and just want excuses to not do work. But those things are like exercises for the brain. I don't know why I'm giving a, a lecture on the importance of school after I just admitted to being terrible at it and also when fighting a giant fire-breathing lizard thing, but uh, such is the case with me. Bomb! What an extreme voice he's got when he yelps out in pain and echoes in here. Fire again. Whoop. Love being able to roll at will. Like when you get the hang of it, it's super fun to just keep hitting against the edges of the screen and rolling really fast. You're going down before you're a problem. And three cycles. More sand for the Phantom Hourglass. Two minutes have been added.
I have been waiting for you, Goro Link. I heard all that terrible thrashing. Did something happen in there, brother? Oh, that nasty beast must have only passed out when you left us, but he couldn't stand up to Link. Oh no, I only I left only because I thought we had defeated it. But we couldn't have done it without you, Gongoron. After our battles together, I have a brand new impression of you now. Oh, it was nothing really. And so I present to you the Goron Pure Metal, brother. Behold the Pure Metal, brother. Thanks, Gongoron. Then let's go grab it, Link. He just doesn't want to admit that he couldn't lift it all by himself. We truly are a grown Goron. You got the Crimsonine. It is one metal you need to make the sacred sword. Only a sword forge of the three pure metals has the power to defeat Bellum. You did it. You got some pure metal. I guess that Linebeck's nose for treasure actually works sometimes. This is the Crimsonine that we Gorons treasure with such pride. So you have accomplished your goal, right, brother? Time to head home then. Hey, Gongoron. Try not to get yourself good and lost again, okay? No problem. Oh, and uh, after you leave this place, stop by my home. My father and I will be waiting for you. See you later, brother. Good kid, but he's such a pushy guy. Well, let's head back to the chief's home. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. We finish any unfinished business at Goron Island and continue on our travels. See you guys then.